You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian this life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Brian Catherman. With me is... Josiah Walker. All right. You almost forgot your name there, didn't you? Yeah, I had to think about it for a second, but I'm there. All right. Hey, so we're at it with the False Gospels series that we're in. We were looking at uh, the various false gospels, kind of how they how they contrast with what the Bible says the gospel is. And yeah. we would love to chat with you, by the way. If you're listening, you'd love to reach out. We have an email address, saltybeliever at gmail.com. If you have questions about false gospels, things you would like to say, hey, wait a minute, what about this? Or you didn't get that right, please feel free to shoot us an email. But in the process, we've had sort of some feedback already on our false gospel series. Oh, awesome. That Great. said, hey, wait a minute. What if I don't know what the gospel is? What are you you're sort of assuming that we all know sure. what you're comparing? So, Josiah, I think we need to take this episode to actually talk about what the gospel right. is. Yeah. Let's right. Call and this the prequel after the first episode. The prequel. Yeah. It's that we're going back. It's the origin story before the before yep. the <laughs> mess stuff was. So we're going to go through these questions that we're using. Yeah. And, and then kind of answer how do we see the Bible answering that? We have some scripture. We can open to those scriptures. You might have to thumb around the pages a little bit or summarize, or people could hit pause. Um, but I think it'd be healthy to do that. So our, our first, well, let's, here's the five questions, and then I'll come back to question number one. Yeah. The questions are who or what is God? Who or what is man? Where do we come from? Where are we going? How do we get there? We're using these five questions to sort of evaluate how people are looking at the gospel or whatever their their statement of hope is or whatever their belief of hope is or whatever. So, right. uh, Josiah, let's just start with where do we come from? What does the Bible say? Where, like, what would you, yeah. what would you point to? And there's lots, but what would you point to to, to try to answer where do we come from? Absolutely. Yeah. I, and that's why I think it's so important that we start with something like the Bible to find these answers, because there's clearly evidence at the very beginning in the book of Genesis, right? In, in chapters one and two, that shows us who God is as the creator of the entire universe, um, maker of mankind, maker of every living creature, maker of the entire world. Um, yeah. And that kind of answers who man is on a lot of levels, right. too. Yeah, a little bit, right? Because we see God create the world and everything in it, and then create man, and then create a helper to go with man, right? So create man, man woman, yeah, God. Um, before we before we move off from kind of the who is God question, how how do we need to understand how Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and also the Father relate to one another? Do you, I mean? You want to take right. a stab at that, at the Trinity <laughs> here? Like, because if you get Jesus wrong and he's not part of the Trinity, you now have a, 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 a miss on the who is God question or the Holy Spirit or whatever. So how would you kind of define that or what do you what do you think? Yeah, for sure. And and that's where, once again, I, I want to draw our attention to God's word and, and go to John 1, 1, you know, that says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Christ, you know. And, and so you see, as you read through scripture, that uh God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all co-eternal and co-existent and, and co-equal with one another. And so, and that that verse says that in the beginning uh, he was with God and he was God. So yeah. it's an identifier that Jesus was. I think I God. convoluted two verses. John yeah, one, one John one fourteen. You got so. jumped. Yeah, you got it. Re like got really excited, like we always do. Like, Whoa! like no. I, or you can look at the places where Jesus identifies himself as God. And I've heard people say, no, he doesn't. But that's why they want to stone him to death. You're blaspheming. Yeah. You're making yourself equal with the Father. Um, there are verses in, where is it, John 10, I and the Father are one. Yeah. Um, you know, I only do the will of my Father. So you see this really, with Christ, you see this really powerful connection. Um, was was the Father... Three. Yeah, go ahead. You, you see the presence of Jesus, uh, you know, as God, right, and incarnate as man. And you see God the Father speaking from heaven and the Holy Spirit descending as a dove. So you see them all together. So it's not like Jesus or God left heaven to become Jesus, right? Right, 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 right. So, yeah. It's not It's not modalism or something. Right. Um, yeah. So is there ever a time when the Father didn't exist? No. Is there ever a time when the Son didn't exist? No. Was there ever a time the Holy Spirit didn't exist? No. So, so it so, wasn't that the Holy Spirit showed up on the scene in in Acts chapter two, right? Yeah, he was always around. 
And Jesus right. didn't just show up in Matthew, the first, you know, oh, now he's created. Right. Uh, which there's a lot of debate about, a lot of debate about, you know, what's the famous line? Was there ever a time when Jesus was not? Right. You know, so if you say, well, he's, there was a time when there wasn't a Jesus, well, then you have a created being, but the Bible seems to point us to an eternal father, an eternal son, and an eternal Holy Spirit. Right. And you see that even in the beginning in Genesis, as we look at Genesis 126, it says, then God said, let us, us, Pearl, the Trinity, make man in our image. Right. So. Perfect. Very, very good. Very good. Um, also, just sort of fascinating, if there was ever a time, this kind of goes back to church history, and I can't remember who specifically argued this, but if there was ever a time when there wasn't the son, then there actually, based on that relationship, wasn't the father either. Right. Right. And then my daughter says, well, how, how are they not brothers? You know, how, why is the relationship father-son? And it's actually showing us aspects of that relationship that we can understand in our own humanity. So I think that's a huge part of it. Uh, so we have the Bible teaches this Trinitarian view of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're co-equal. They're co-eternal. They're all-powerful. Um they're all all loving. They're all knowing. They're all you know omnipresent. They're all present. Uh, they have all those full attributes, the right. full range of God. Um, not and and Satan, because I remember in the last episode you had talked about how kind of where you grew up, Satan was really powerful. How does Satan stack up against this picture of God? Since we already talked about it in the other episode, right? So when you realize that God's always existed, that He's all powerful, omniscient, all knowing, and you realize and you take into account the fact that satan is a created being right and that god made him you realize he only has the power that god gives him you right know? And, and he's and not god, surprising he god right you know he he knows the beginning from the end and he's outside of time he's not like getting a fast one over on god so so unlike god where god is everywhere all the time always satan is not he's bound by time he's bound by space he's bound by you know yeah so, so. so there is a drastic difference there Okay, so this is sort of the what is God, what does the Bible say about God? And I think if we're going to talk about a gospel, we need to be uh, mindful of the fact that God had a perfect design, which we saw in Genesis 1 and 2. Um, we see, like in Psalm 19, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. God had this design for us that we were intended to live in, um, and we're going to we we'll probably need to deal with this in two parts, So. The next question is, what is man? And I think this is helpful. And also, where are we going? So this next piece sort of plays into both of those. So before we we jump into how all this got broken from God's design, we probably need to say, okay, what is man? Going back to Genesis 1 and 2. So what's man, Josiah, based on, on that Genesis 1 and 2 account? Yeah, well, if you look at Genesis, you see that God created man to really rule over creation and, and have dominion over it. Um, and so he's working, he's got a job in, in the garden. Yeah. And so you see that in, in chapter two, verse 16, and the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, uh, but don't eat from the tree of good and evil. So he's given him some parameters and how he's supposed to live and, and abide in the garden of Eden. Um, but he, but God is commanding the man. Yeah. So the man actually, who is man is a created subject Correct. of the all powerful King God. Yeah, so as created beings, uh, we are not God. We are not like God. You know, uh, Adam and Eve, we see from Scripture, were created in the image of God. Verse 27 of chapter 1 says, God created man in his own image. He created them in the image of God, male and female. Uh, so they, they they are designed by God. Um, but as we see when we, when we move on further later on to sin, we see that that image has been distorted through sin entering the world. So Right. And verse 31, chapter 131, and it was very good. He created... He created man, he created all of this stuff, and it was very good. So this isn't like an accident, oops. Here's yeah. This isn't like the product of, you know, in like some of the the uh, Greek mythology or something like, oh, these two creatures fought and the byproduct of their battle or a, a byproduct of an affair or something became mankind. It's nothing like that. This was, this was God's fun, good creation. Right? Yeah. yeah. And it's not just a, a, another piece of his creation. You see, it's kind of the, the accumulating or the just the final touches of God's creation. Like he's finished with the kind of the best and the pinnacle of all that he's made. So and that's why he's made man to rule over all of creation. Okay. So, um, you know, this is, so the questions are who is God, who is man? We're dealing a lot with where do we come from? 
So we're, we're sort of dealing with that same question. Where do we come from? We come from God's creation, but there's a major factor here that becomes a problem that speaks into where we're going. And the problem is sin, right, and the fall, because we're not in this same very good status. So, uh, you know, Genesis 3 is going to deal with this, Romans 3, Romans yep. 6. What is sin, Josiah? What happened? First of all, what happened in the garden? Sure. In the where did we come from? And then what does that mean for us as who we are as humanity? Yeah. So as I mentioned, we see in Genesis 1 that God's given man dominion over the earth. And as I mentioned uh, in verse 16 and 17, he says, hey, these are the parameters of how you're supposed to tend for the garden, the things you can't eat, the things you can't eat as commanded by God, who's sovereign and ruler over all. And then we see Satan come on the picture in, in the form of a serpent and really deceive uh, the woman into saying, you know, does God really say X, Y, Z that you can't do this? And so men and women are deceived and, and we see them sin and we see sin enter into the world, right? And, and kind of break God's perfect design and perfect creation for man yeah. at all times. So and then in verse 315, you see kind of the the that God will put hostility between the woman and, and, and the serpent and between her your offspring and her offspring, and you'll strike your head and you will strike his heel and you just see this conflict that God establishes between good and evil right there. And, and based on this, where is man now going? So man is now yeah. passed out of the garden and they're, right. they're not allowed to be in the presence of God at this point. If nothing changes, if everything remains the same, where are we going? Yeah. So now we've, there's kind of a, a chasm that's been created between us and God that separates us from him. And so now Rather than spending eternity with him and fellowshipping with him in the Garden of Eden and in creation as God has designed for man, uh, we're now cast out, right? Adam and Eve are cast out of the Garden of Eden to toil and work and sweat and struggle and and so and we're die. destined to <laughs> and die. Yeah. To be separated from God for all eternity and spend eternity in hell. We see that uh throughout scripture and through Romans, like you said before. Uh Romans 3 23 says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, wages of sin and death, six twenty three. Yeah. So, yeah. so now, so who we are is we're sinful. Um, you know, there are some will say we're totally depraved. Does that mean that we do nothing but wicked and evil all the time at all costs? We can't do anything that even look good. Or does that mean something else? What does that mean? No, it means that our our, our flesh is really. Uh, prevalent to just make sinful, poor decisions. If left to our own devices, apart from God and his grace and any good that he gives us, uh, we are going to do evil, wretched, terrible things. Anything I do is good as a result of Christ living in me and me seeking to be more like him. So we're incapable, apart from God, uh, to rectify the the problem, right? We're like, Correct. we're dead. We have a heart of stone. No. We're dead. We're not, we are incapable. Okay, so, so that brings that with your kids as, as they learn to steal or, or lie about, you know, taking a cookie from the cookie jar. We don't teach our children that, but they just are born with that in their nature to do those things. So, so. Uh, who is God? Who is man? And now we found out that he's got a sin problem. Um, where yeah. do we come from? We talked about that. Where we're going, apart from, from God, would be uh, to judgment and to be ultimately cast out from God's presence forever in an eternal punishment, which the Bible calls hell. And so, you know, we have death, uh, hell. This is not a pretty picture. Or the alternative is we could be going to, uh, a, you know, back to the presence of God, uh, which sure. the Bible calls heaven, and then eventually the new heavens and the new earth, where we have the redeemed garden, where we have a job, where we work, where we have physical bodies, where we're resurrected from this death to live in life. So that's an option based on our question number five, which is how do we get there? How do we, how do we get to, how do we get there? So Josiah, right. you want to take a stab at that? How in the world do we go from right now without God intervening, I'm cast out from God's presence forever. However, there is a way in which where we're going, the answer can be to glory, to be with Christ, resurrected, new bodies, no pain, no suffering, the end the termination of all sin. Yeah. Okay. Question number five. How do we, we get do. there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How do we absolutely. do it? So that's where Christ comes in. And that's why you see in John 1, 1, that in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. And then jump down to verse 14 and see that Christ came and, and dwelt among us because 
as you see Adam and Eve being cast out of the Garden of Eden, Eden and separated from God, uh, there's now that chasm. So we don't have access to God. We can't get there, right? There's no all roads lead to heaven because there's no way to cross over that. Yeah, that no roads. Void. No roads <laughs> right. lead to heaven there only Jesus, no right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so Christ came to, to die and pay the price of our sins. We see that in John 3, 16, that God loved the soul, whole world, that he gave his son to, to die and pay the penalty for our sins and really pay the ransom for the sins that we've caused that separated us from Christ. So and that so all of you believe would have eternal life, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we see that in, in, in Romans 10, Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, the mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I like John 1, so, 12. You were talking about the jump between 1 and 14 in the beginning was God, and then the word, you know, then God became flesh. And then John 1, 12 says, to all who did receive him, because a bunch that says won't, but to all who did receive him, he gave, the right, gave them the right to become children of God. I love that verse. Like, oh, yeah. we get to be adopted into this because we were children of wrath. We were headed into this direction, you know. We're going about the family business, but then we're adopted into a new family and we get this new family business. It's great, right? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we're adopted. Family. It's beautiful. And so, uh, you know, at that point, we don't obviously just immediately get sucked up to heaven. Right. We we still live this life out because I think it's important to remember that 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 hope and that promise in Christ saves us. But also we are being saved as we're being sanctified and continue to be grown in that in that hope and solidified in that confidence and being conformed to the image of Christ until he's formed in us, Galatians. And then and then when we stand at the final judgment, which the Bible says there will be one, we just appeal to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here because he promised that to all who believe in him, he'll give eternal life. So I'm appealing to Jesus. And that's this final, we will be saved because he's traded our sin and our death penalty for his righteousness so that we can stand before God justified. Right? So, I, I mean, I think we're probably running short on time at this point, but this is awesome. I mean, this is the gospel. This is the heart of Christianity. It's the point of the the salvific history of God and what he's doing to intercede with mankind. It's Genesis to Revelation. You know, in the macro picture, it's it's the perfect life, death, burial, resurrection uh, of Christ in the micro view. I mean, it. this is the gospel. Yeah. Right? So when we're contrasting um, things against this, you get some of these parts wrong and you have real trouble. Absolutely. Right? Big because trouble. it convolutes everything. So. What, are, what are we missing here? So maybe we should do this um, since we're talking about the gospel. So there's lots of ways to share the gospel if you're talking with people. It always gets a little fuzzy at the end because you need some sort of a conclusion. So sure. sometimes people say, oh, you need to pray this prayer and that'll save you. Well, does the prayer save you? No, it's the faith that you have in Christ that saves you. Right. It's, yeah. So Christ is the one who saves. So the prayer is good. You can conclude with, hey, let's pray together. But really, if one yeah. has come to this belief truly in their heart, and they confess Jesus has been raised from the dead, then they have this promise of salvation, right? They can and that's call what themselves leads people to believe you have to say that prayer is because it says if you confess with your mouth. But what that's saying is, do you believe in your heart? Are you confessing this? Is your is this your confession, right? Yeah. So are you declaring this? Yeah. Uh, right. Probably I would say to people even, not just God in a prayer and then you keep it all secret. I mean, maybe, but but so the point is now, what if it seems like nothing changes? You ever encounter? I mean, you're a pastor. You ever talk to people? Go. It doesn't seem like a whole lot changed from what from today. I what you know. This morning I woke up and I didn't believe that Jesus was Lord, and now I do, and I've confessed, and I really firmly believe it. But I seem like the same person. What do you say to that guy or lady? I'd say that I'd say that more changes than you probably realize. I mean, your eyes have been opened. You've seen the truth. You've accepted the gospel, and so. Now it's the process of, of being sanctified and growing in Christ. You know, it's it's not the kind of thing where you're going to, like a microwave meal, be changed in an instant. You are being <laughs> yeah. changed. It's not minute instant. rice. But that takes time, right? You got to sit that crock pot and, and watch it grow. And so that's what's happening is, is you're growing, you're maturing. Uh, as you spend more time in God's word and learning more about him, uh, you see those changes. And so then as you look back on your life, you can say, oh, look, I have changed, you know. Right. We it's a lot easier to. We can do it. 
lot yeah, easier to look back, right? And go, oh. Yeah. So, hey, um, we could have gone to lots and lots and lots and lots of scriptures because I think both you and I uh, will point out that, you know, hey, here is here is uh, the the gospel in this section of this Bible and this or in this Bible in this book of the Bible or in this passage of scripture. You can usually see that, and so. Uh, we could have gone lots of places. We just did a lot of summary work, but really the whole of the Bible speaks to this gospel. It speaks to who Jesus is. It speaks to this good news. And so we've laid out a summary. If you're listening and you have more questions, you can you can go to saltybeliever.com and there is like a, a forum you can fill out and you can do that. You can email us at saltybeliever at gmail.com. You can uh, reach out to Josiah. He's at Redeeming Life Church in Bountiful, Utah. You can reach yeah. out to me. I'm at uh, Trinity Church in Holdridge, Nebraska. Um, or, Josiah, you have maybe one more recommendation to somebody who's listening that might be a good place to start and get a picture. What you got? Yeah, absolutely. You know, As you mentioned, the entire Bible is one redemptive story from Genesis to Revelation. But that can be a lot to digest and read in one setting. So I always recommend, and you recommend this book too, uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible. Every story whispers his name. This was written by Sally Lloyd Jones, and uh, it's just a great. It's a children's book, but it's great for adults. I love it because it has pictures, but it just shows the entire rede redemptive story that we just talked about and the gospel in, in a really digestible, easy read. I would uh, really recommend it if you really you're really trying to make sense of this. That is a. I mean, it's it sounds silly because it's got pictures and it's. It yep. would seem like you know, a children's Bible, but they do such a good job of showing the whole collective story of the gospel together, as we've just discussed it throughout the whole, they kind of say, here's a survey of the whole Bible, but you can read it. I mean, I knew one guy who read it, you know, in just a couple hours and, and then sure. realized this is who Jesus is. We had a great conversation. So that's a really good think resource. It, think of it as cliff notes on, on the gospel. There you so. go. There you go. You can also go to yeah. saltybeliever.com and there is a, there's a page on there. And like a little ad banner when it first comes up, this is what is the gospel. Just click that. And there's a bunch of presentations and, and more answers. We just want to encourage that if you are wrestling with understanding what the true gospel is in light of whatever false gospels you hold on to, that you have an avenue or a resource to hear the truth. And then we're going to continue talking about what some of the other false ones are. So I just want to encourage you to come along with us on the journey. And uh, hopefully that will help you understand the gospel. Uh, thanks for listening. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of saltybeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.